So if you've been using Unreal Engine 5.0 up until 5.5, your UI has probably looked like this, but now because Epic does Epic things, it changed. Basically everything in the viewport is flipped horizontally. So let me explain. Let's go back to the 5.5 version I had open just a second ago. In your default viewport, this is the typical UI that you see when you use Unreal Engine 5.0 up until 5.5. And if your UI does not look like this, you probably need to go up to Window, Load Layout, and UE4 Classic Layout. This is just how I like to work. You could also use the default editor which looks like this, but I don't recommend it because you have less buttons to press and you can't, you don't have access to all of your ingredients and tools and stuff as quickly as the other version. So let's go back to window, load layout, UE4 classic layout. And as I said, everything in the viewport has changed. It's basically flipped on, flipped horizontally in Unreal Engine 5.6. So let me just quickly overview what's here so you can ideally get back up to speed with Unreal Engine 5.6. So over here, we have all of our, I guess, transformation tools and modes. So we could switch to our selection mode, which is just the Q button, translate mode. You also have the keyboard shortcuts associated with it. With it. So those fortunately have not changed. So Q, E, W, R, etc. to switch between all of your gizmos there. Now, one thing I'm really stoked about here is that there is this use experimental gizmos. And what this is, it's a different kind of gizmo to rotate our objects. It's kind of like something you'd see in Maya, Blender, Cinema 4D, etc. Uh, I do like this one a little bit more. Uh, but uh, it says it's experimental, so I don't know, maybe it's bugged, we'll see. But you all, you have that, which is cool. You also have the ability to turn on translucent selection, so if you had a transparent object in your scene, something that has a translucent material, like glass, and you can't select it, you want to be able to you want to select this. So those are pretty much the main menus I'm going to be using here. You also have the ability to change between your different gizmos up here. But like I said, using W, E, and R will allow you to switch between each of those gizmos. Now, the really big important thing that a lot of people struggle with when it comes to working in Unreal is the world space versus local space. So the world space is basically the orientation of your gizmo as you move an object, rotate and trans transform an object. So you can see that as I rotate this, it's basically keeping the gizmo oriented in the same direction and that's the world space. But if we switch to the local space here, you have this button up here. So uh, the keyboard shortcut for that is control tilde and uh, just learn the keyboard shortcut. It will save you a ton of time. So let's just undo all of that. So your local world space is there. You also have your snapping and you can set it to do snapping for a bunch of different, um, I guess, snapping objects. So you could do snap to location, which we'll get to this stuff in a second. But you could also snap to actors, sockets, vertices against planes, etc. I actually have not used the planer. So what happens if I do... Do that. Is that gonna, eh, I don't think that's gonna work. Only works in perspective views right now. Ah, fun facts. This is why we read things before doing tutorials. We're just gonna ignore that for now. So let's just ignore the planner stuff, but your snapping tools are all gonna be here on Unreal Engine 5.0 up until 5.5. It was on the right side of your viewport. Uh, so you can turn on snapping with these icons here, and this is gonna be your position snapping. So if I set this value to one and then move it, it's gonna snap in increments of one. If I set this here and hit the E key to rotate and then rotate, we can see it's snapping by degrees of 10. You can change the number here, but you can also just turn off snapping and get uh, all the decimal rotation that you may need. And same thing with your scale snapping, hit R, scale up, or just turn that off undo all of that. Now on the right side of your viewport here, we have our different modes. So this was originally on the left side of the viewport and we could switch between a top view, which for some reason, I don't know why that's not working. Maybe it's because we're looking through a camera. Let's go ahead and uh, I'm gonna go back to uh, the regular view because this is just being absolute chaos and I don't understand why 
uh, this uh, menu is not here. I typically don't actually use this menu all that much, but under this perspective, this is typically where I go and make cameras. So under perspective, scroll all the way down to camera, camera actor or cine camera actor. This is where I'll typically just add my cameras. We can also set our piloting here so we can choose where we want to pilot things. We can also change our camera movement, but that's also going to be right here as well. So if we select this menu right here and we hold right click and then WASD to move around, we can uh, see our camera is moving kind of like a video game. But if we set this up to a much higher value, like so, we're gonna fly super fast, uh, but we don't need that. Uh, also, if you don't know, if you hit the G key, you can turn off your gizmos. And if you select an object in your scene and hit the F key, you can center it up in your viewport. Now, I'm currently in the path tracer mode, but under this menu right here, which is originally on the left hand side, you can go back to your lip mode. Now, this is the real time mode. Oh my god, that's way too fast. Let's set this back to 0.3 or whatever it was, and then zoom back in there. Now, under the lip mode, you also have your different view modes of like your wireframe, you have your uh, path tracing right there. So if you wanted the highest quality render settings, you could go ahead and turn that on. You also have this drop down, which originally was, uh, what was it actually? Let's see, it was the show mode. And typically when you're in the show mode, I hate this grid that's just in the world. So I just typically turn it off. So instead of the show menu, you now have the eyeball and the eyeball will allow you to turn on and off things like the grid and stuff. So now you have the grid, but uh, we're gonna go back to the lip mode and now we see the grid and the show mode, we're gonna turn off the grid there, so. Yeah, another couple things that you have is under this performance, uh, the speedometer, you have the ability to set your mode from like low to medium to high. It's basically like your graphics card settings when you play a video game. So let's just go ahead and set this to low and see what happens. Oh God, that looks awful. What if we do medium? That looks better. High, epic, cinematic. Awesome. So uh, you have all those things. Uh, you can go ahead and uh, change your viewport scalability if you need it. You can also set your material quality here. You can also set screen percentage, but I do not recommend doing this because this will basically like upscale your render. Let's just blow up my computer right now. So let's set this to like 150 and it's probably gonna um, take up more GPU power, but the render is gonna look a little bit nicer. What if we set this to like 200? Am I gonna blow up my computer? Oh God. Oh yeah, that's uh, definitely a little bit more chunky. So let's just set this back to the original spot. And oh, let's just set this back to 91 or 100 and not override that. So you can see here under the screen percentage, we have a summary of all the statistics. So like the actual resolution that we're rendering, all that. So if you have a beefy computer, you could deal with this if you want to, to get a better looking viewport. But honestly, I don't recommend it. Just save that for your renders. Now over here, we have our viewport like audio. If we need to do anything with that, we have our mouse sensitivity, kind of like in a game, you can increase that. But I'm just gonna set that back to 0.2 because I like my defaults. And then the last thing is uh, this viewport display. So you have the ability to go to four different viewports over here. This is typically under like window viewports. You could also just add a second viewport which now we have a second viewport, amazing. You could dock this somewhere if you want, but uh, you also could go in here and then switch to this one or switch to this one with this top right hand menu. Let's go back to our uh, perspective view here and then hold right click, center up, set this back to oh, 0.3. Cool, okay, sweet. So yeah, that's all the big viewport changes in Unreal Engine 5.6. Pretty much everything else is the same, but I'll be coming out with some videos soon on um, all the new stuff. All right, well, hope you learned something. If you did, let me know in the comment section down below. Questions, comments, concerns, whatever else. Comment section is down there for that as well. And if you have, uh, actually no, I guess that's it. Don't forget, one gram of protein per pound of body weight. Jeez. Goodbye, my friends.